What's up, YouTube? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 143. And I'll be honest with y'all, this last week was tough on your boy. I haven't been this upset and depressed is kind of the word probably since Madden 18. You know, it's, it hasn't been a while for me to be this bummed out for real, for real. And luckily for the, the podcast, we get to talk all about it, boys. I is to the point where I was, it's a crossroads, man. And I'm definitely at a crossroads right now for myself and everything. I was definitely, it's always good vibes. What's up, boys? What's up? We got one tie. This is the first time we've ever had one topic. I'm good, P. Dot. Trust me. I'm, I'm good. It's not a prayer for a situation. Anything like that. We're good. There's a lot of people doing a lot worse than me. My man Mellow with the year. Let's go. Your R. Yes, Superstat. Your R. I am. Well. I know, I mean, it's been a long, it's not even been a week. It's been a long five days, a really long five days. You know, that's right, Jay. My, that's right, that's right, right. It's been a really long five days. My man, Europe with five. All right, so... There was the Nita Bowl. I don't even know what else to talk about. Let's just get into my... What happened. Because you guys have been asking me. And we kind of talked about it a little bit. We kind of talked about it a little bit during the weekend. And, uh... But, I'll talk about it from the beginning. From everything that happened. Um, If you guys don't know me, um, I am... 34 years old. I started playing Madden when I was 14, maybe. I don't know. But when I won my belt back in the prehistoric years, I remember uh, trying to... I was never a nerd. Now, I don't know what your nerd level is. Like, my nerd level was zero. Like, as far as technology and equipment and, you know, computers. My... My nerd level was, I was a regular working human being, if that makes sense. I don't know what, Chad, what is your nerd level? Mine was about a zero, maybe a one, right? Maybe I was a one on nerd level, right? My nerd level was never good. Never, I was never smart. Well, not smart. I was always smart, but I'm talking about like how computer wise and technology and shit I, I was kind of like Shacoby's like a 15 let's be honest he's capping he's a 15 I was definitely very low like as far as like videos record all that I didn't know what the hell I needed I, I remember that feeling but I remember knowing that you know what they people make money for streaming and making content you know and I I kind of just got introduced to that in Madden 16 really it's like okay let me do what I have to do to do this and I had to go and figure it out uh I don't want to say on my own I always had friends especially once I won a man tournament everybody kind of wants to be your friend when you win a man tournament and that's when I met Toke and CC and Skomo and stuff and they helped me a lot but my technology level was very low and as an old person and being the person I am, I kind of, I always said to myself, what I have to offer Madden players and is that guidance that I kind of didn't have when I was 16 or in Madden 16 and 17 when I was, you know, 28 and 29 and stuff. Uh, and, and that's kind of what Needed Gaming started as, you know, I'm, I don't have the money to be a super organization. I don't have the sponsorships to be a super organization. Uh. If you guys don't know me, I I did have, and we'll get into that a lot more. The um the tweets that I had in Madden or in 2011 
where I was calling my friend a bunch of racial slurs. I did have that. And that has always been over my head, rightfully, because at the time and still now is super wrong. You know, and we will get into that in a lot more detail. Uh, but most people know that. And I, I always take for granted that there's a lot of new people that don't know that. But it is something that happened to me. And it's something that I did. I won't even say it was something that happened to me. It's something that I did when I was younger. And it's kind of the gross and inappropriate way that I used to joke with my friends. And it's not how I live now. And it's not how I will continue to live. But that always has hung over my head. Um, it's always stopped me from having the opportunities that other people have. And I understand that, you know, it's and it's always going to be there. And this week was a reminder that it's always going to be there and it's never going to go away. And it, every time that happens to me, it's a little bit depressing. But I, I mean, I I made this boat that I float in. So I'm OK with that. And I've been able to live with that. But that's why I started my own group, because I didn't have opportunities other people had. Uh, and I remember having Echo Fox was talk. Echo Fox was like. They were like just looking for a whore. That's it. They were walking down the street looking for a whore. Right? And this is when MCS was kind of popping, man, 17, 18. It was kind of popping. So so Echo Fox was looking for a whore on the corner. They started with Skimbo. Skimbo's price was too high for him. So they didn't. <laughs> Echo Fox did not uh, wind up. Uh, let me say it. Echo Fox did not wind up talking to Skimbo. So then after Skimbo, they came to me. Now, obviously, me and Skimbo, we talk about everything. So I knew that he was like, nah, I don't want to be part of Echo Fox. But then they're talking to me. I'm like, oh, shit, they give me a couple thousand dollars a month. I'm excited. And the best part for me, it was always like, damn, a company really wants to work with me. A company really does want to work with me. Right. So I was super kind of excited, like, oh, damn, this is cool. Like, I'm, I'm out of the I'm out of the forest of you know, this stuff hanging over me. That's kind of how I felt. I made it to the clear. But then, you know, a week later, uh, they told me they Googled me or they found it and they don't want to deal with me. So they were off my whore bandwagon and then they moved to Joke. And that's when Joke signed with the Echo Fox, you know. So that is when I, I kind of, that was after Nita started. Nita was kind of started in Madden 17 and 18. And uh, yeah, so Echo Fox left me and then went to Joke. So, I really never, I, I really never imagined myself being with any org because of this. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make my own. I was motivated. I remember Madden 18. I remember them not putting me in the game, right? As a coach, when I was like the biggest belt, I mean, it was Skimbo and then it was me as far as like the biggest belt winners and personalities. And they did not put me in the game. And that, that hurt me. And that, that was like the same, that feeling I had then was the same feeling I've had this week of like, it's pointless. You know, what I'm doing is uh, never going to work. Uh, I, I should just quit. Honestly, that's the feeling I've had that week. And it's the feeling I've had this weekend for real. It really has been for the last five days of feeling like I should quit. Uh, this is pointless really is the feeling I've had. And, um, but at that moment I had a crossroads and that's when I just continue to invest in myself because I believe in myself and that's why we're at, we're, that's why we're here now, you know, because I continue to believe in myself, continue to invest in myself. So back then needed, when I started it, I said, you know, I'm, we're going to be a group of friends that just work together and really try to motivate each other. That's what is the most important thing about it. And I remember I was blessed to have a fella named Philly Ron, who I haven't really talked to probably in three years. I don't know if he ever pays attention to man anymore, but Philly Ron helped me a lot. You know, when I first started um, content and in this community, he helped me a lot. And then the best thing he did for me was when EA threw a challenger in Philly in Madden 18, he brought me down. He brought me down to Nerd Street and that's when I met Rob and that's when I met all the Nerd Street guys prior to the tournament, you know, like, yeah, I'm a guy that want to. Nice to meet y'all. And, and at the time, I'm like, all right, these dudes are fucking nerds. They are nerds. I'll be honest. Rob is a nerd. Everybody in that building was pretty much a nerd. But that is where I sucked at was being a nerd. It goes back to my zero. So they uh, meeting those guys. And at the time, Nerd Street was all about like community and like let's build up the Philly streamers and all that like, the nerd stuff. You know, I I actually went to a Nerd Street streamer community meetup went to one don't think i'll go back to another who knows what my life will be but 
I went to one. It was good times. Um, but anyway, I was able to meet Rob and, and that relationship, uh, him, Steve, and everybody, my buddy Andre that works down there, just got Griffin, all these guys, I, you know what I'm saying? And all the, I meet all these guys and they teach me so much about producing and, and com- you know, computers and all this stuff. They were so mad I bought, so mad I bought a pre-built computer and stuff. So those guys always helped me. And then, uh, so that is probably one of the, the best things Philly Ron ever did to me was introduce me to all those guys. And uh, so my goal was, okay, I'm a nerd. Now I know what it's like to be an absolute idiot in streaming, but I want to stream, you know, and how can I help other people? You know, how can I help other people one, add them to my team, help grow my brand together, and also help them stream and learn how to do it, have the right equipment and all that stuff. Because I didn't know. I didn't know how to do the shit. And I learned slowly, gradually, buying a bunch of shit I didn't need. You know how many microphones I bought at first? I think I bought a microphone that plugged into my phone at first and thought it was it. And I came home and it, it, it just didn't work. But I learned all that stuff. Uh, kind of the hard way and kind of through YouTube. So I thought my my biggest asset was helping people stream. And, and uh, most of the people that were on my team were just my friends for the most part, you know. And when it first started, I'll tell you, uh, I saw Clef in Madden 19 or 18. One year when he started playing at the end, right? I want to say it was Madden 18, like the summertime. Like he was a June goon or whatever they call. And I remember him watching him, right? I remember watching him and I always, I always believed that Clef would be like the best streamer. I thought he'd be the best Madden player. I always believed that. Um, and I told him that, that Madden 18, I said, listen, dude. And I remember him asking in a Twitch chat, what computer do I get? And, and when I saw him asking in a Twitch chat, how do I get a computer? What type of computer do I need? It flashed me back to exactly how I felt when it was time to get a computer. That exact cluelessness when it was time to get a computer. And I, I reached out to him and I said, Clef, man, I believe in you. I'll get you a computer. Just be part of my team, everything like that. Uh, and that's how we started. And I always told him I believed in him and I think he'll be the best. I think he'll be the best streamer. And I, I will always believe that to this day. Um, so then the stream team started. And I told you my biggest asset was I knew how to do the stuff. I, I went through the road of being a streamer already, buying the equipment. I know how to use OBS. And then I had Rob and I had uh, all the Nerd Street behind me. And I told these guys, uh, listen, I have guys that know how to do all this producing stuff. They know how to work OBS. Uh, whatever you need, and, uh, I will help you guys. And and at the point, I will tell you, Clef is probably the, the first person I reached out to that I wanted, that I saw. And I said, you know what? He's special that I saw that I, everybody else on my team was pretty much my friends at the time. Uh, this was Skimbo didn't really stream. Uh, Boogs pretty much still doesn't really stream, but you know, uh, he those were my friends. Like that was like a no brainer. But Clef was the guy I reached out to that I thought was special, and I still do. I always will. Uh, and I was like, you know, I want him part of my team, and I want to help him because he is going through the same thing I did prior to getting equipment and stuff. So that's how we started. Um, and that was Madden 19, 18, Madden 19 probably for sure, the start of Madden 19. And I remember I remember buying computer parts. That, I'm still not a nerd. I remember buying computer parts for Clef, bringing them down to Nerd Street, and Dre built the computer. Then we mailed it as a whole computer to, to Clef in the Florida. And he got, I don't know if it's still the same computer he uses, but uh, that's how we started. And, um... And like I said, I always believed in him. He's the first person I looked at outside of needed, outside of my friends. I said, this guy's want to pop for real. And uh, yeah, buying. Trust me, Mac. Trust me, I did not buy them. I got a list and bought the list. Now, trust me, I, I just bought a list that somebody gave me, Mac. Trust me. I to this day, I don't think I could pick out the right computer parts for a computer. But then it it, it grew in more and more, and then obviously Trey became a part of it. Uh, Boogs, User, uh, Skimbo started streaming, Vilma started streaming. Everybody that, uh, whatchamacallit, everybody everybody that I was close with, I really have urged all my friends to start streaming, dude. Especially Vilma, uh, my buddy Elite that I used to play man with, my buddy Proof I used to play man with. In fact, Proof, 
I still half of my lingo is stuff that proof says. Like, I'll be honest, like he's a funny ass dude. And I tell him all oh, start streaming, man. Like I have I have put myself in a position as a streamer to help you, you know, grow your stream. I have put myself in position to be able to give it back to my friends. And that's pretty much what the stream team became. Now, uh, I for me, I, you know, I was I always my dreams are through the roof. My dreams are astronomical. I would love to be 100 thieves. That That is like my pinnacle. You know, I would love to get there. Um, but, you know, at first you have to be able to grind together. And the biggest thing. Once we got into baseball, I remember baseball in the summertime. It was great to have uh, me, Skimbo, AJ, Dylan, and Gunsky every night. Like, we would try to, like, outdo each other or just not outdo each other, but seeing others work and succeed really motivated me. And that's kind of the best part of having a, a team, having a team around you and everything like that. It really was. Um, so that is the big was the biggest benefit for me is just really having these guys work and, and really motivating myself even especially in a time where Madden's not popping and our streams aren't popping as much but then this year happened I feel like we're, we're doing well everybody's doing well last year Madden 21 was the year we got everybody 70 30 from twitch from being on the team now people don't get 70 30 anymore um, it's really tough to get 70, 30 means you get 70% of your sub money. Most partners nowadays are get 50% of their sub money. Um, for me, I, I was able to get most of the guys 70, 30 split from being on the team. So that was a big deal. In fact, I, I believe Skimbo is probably the only one that still doesn't have it. He was like a month too late and he missed out on it. And I, I still feel like it's, I feel still feel like it's the one of the biggest letdowns of my life, honestly, that he was not able to get on board with that, you know, for real. Uh, so that, but most of my friends have it because they were on my team. So that was a good thing. But then we go to this year. The competitive part was kind of, the competitive part, I mean, we haven't really had success, I guess. Madden 18, we were on top of the world. Madden 19, Jacksonville happened. I don't know what we anybody in my group did. I don't remember. Madden 20, we kind of got popped. We all got popped. Skimbo made it a little bit far, but he got popped. And then nine, Madden 21, Skimbo didn't play, and we all got popped. But then Skimbo came back this year, so it was a different vibe. It felt good. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, Skimbo's like LeBron. He came back. He was leading the squad. It had a different vibe. Everything looked good. And, and and I will tell you, I know a lot of you guys don't really know, like, how much energy people put into this first tournament in any Madden tournament, you know. So we were, like, I'm talking, like, really, like, a lot of energy. I'm talking hours and hours every single night trying to get better and better and better. And, you know, every single Madden sweat across the country is doing the same thing. You know, every little group is having their own discord. They're having their own group battles and everything. And, so that's what it was for a month, you know, and we're looking around this group of guys and we realize, you know, we're pretty fucking old, you know, I'm me being the oldest at 34. I think Bugs is 34. User is, I don't, he, a user is 30 something. Skimbo is the youngest and he's turning 30 in like a month. For real. Like we're really old. And Trey at the time was like, Trey is like 25, Right. Trey is like 25, but he's like a 45 for real, for real, because he got two kids, you know, it's, you know what I'm saying? I've been to a Trey is older, so we're all kind of old, right? The youngest person at the time we had was Clef, but Clef kind of old too. We all have kids. Like, we're an old-ass team. You look at TNC, they haven't come close to having a kid. So, you look around at us... Dudes disappear on the mic for, for two hours. Like, I'm telling you. Like, we're an old-ass group, right? We're out here trying to find blitzes. None of us old-ass dudes trying to put in two controllers and stuff like that. And, but we're not. But then we're trying to stream, make videos. And nobody trying to put two controllers in a lap. So my point is, we're looking around in this group and we say, Joe, yo, listen. We got to find some young, we got to find some new people. 
Now, I have always been kind of hesitant to really add people in Madden because I feel like our our reputation and our pedigree is, is super high. Like, I mean, between me, Skimbo, Bugs, as much as we joke about Bugs, he's had super success in Madden. Like, let's not downstate that. I've always felt like, yeah, like, yeah, we the 2000, something like that. Yeah, we're old, Dukes. You know what I'm saying? So, I've always been a little bit hesitant. But to, to, this was the year it was like, yo... We got to get some young blood in here, right? So that's when we start just throwing names up on the bulletin board. And at the time, it was kind of like everybody had a problem with everybody you brought up for the most part. Like, damn, what about this guy? Oh, I don't like him that much. Oh, we had beef. We had beef in Madden 19. Oh, we had beef in Madden 14. It's just like, like, it was always something. Uh, and then... It kind of got to the point where it was like, boys, we got to find somebody. We got to find somebody, right? So, so we get to the point where it's like, I think Trey was like, yo, John Beast. And I'm like, yo, I know John Beast always from the C4 tournaments Vilma used to go to. For some reason, I'm a, for some reason, I'm a crazy Vilma supporter, and I would drive to Connecticut to watch him play in these Larry Ridley tournaments. Because I'll be honest, the little Foxwood Casino was kind of popping up there in Connecticut. It was a good times. And John was always at those. Like, I feel like that's like the G League of Madden. Not even the G League. That's like middle school JV. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, I kind of knew John through that. And he was always in that little underground squad or the underground community and stuff like that. So, uh, Vilma always knew him. So, I was like, all right, what's up? So, we wind up adding John to the Discord. John's a sweat if you don't like he's he's a mad nerd. Like I'm talking this dude knows what what goddamn Calvin Johnson pass block rating is. Like he he's kind of what we needed. A a, a nerd, a kid nerd that grinds the game. So it as far as I'm concerned, it was a super dub. And uh everybody was grinding the game. We were playing the shit out the game with John. Um we that we added that boy to the Discord. He was in there chilling with us. Uh, he should have been for a year or so. And then we added what you call Joff, because Joff, when Joff put out, first of all, I've always been a Joff fan. And then he put out the video, and I hit him up. I'm like, bro, what's up? How I do that little juke? And he was like, yo, I want to be needed. I said, all right, let's do it. So I added him. So those three guys, right? So, as the tournament breaks down, we all get popped outside of Clef and John. So, Clef and John are are on... They both make the live event. Uh, So, they both make the live. So, we're super excited. Now, you got to understand. While we're in our Discord playing the shit out the game, trying our hardest, trying our best to make it, so is every other crew in Madden. They're sweating their dicks off to try to make this first tournament. Right? It is kind of a measuring stick of what squad is smarter, what squad is better, what squad has the better players. It always is. That's how it always is. You want to beat the, you want, like, fuck them other guys. That's how it feels when Madden, when it comes to Madden, for real. It, it just is. Like, it really is, like, that's how the vibe of it is. Like, you you want to win and you want to show other people that you're better than them and, and your group is smarter and you got the best players for real. That's how it was in Madden 18. I remember, I remember Madden 18 people being mad that me and Skimbo were on opposite sides of the bracket at the end of the, uh, end of the Madden 18 classic. So they, they were like, they kind of set it up so y'all could play each other like that. So, and it was like that vibe again where we made it. And it's like, and we look at the bracket and it's like, damn, it's really a chance they could win and they could play. Now, I'm a realist. I've always been a realist. Maybe a pessimist, but I'm like, it's no way. It's no way. And in the back of my mind, there's no way. There's no way they both win the win out and make it in the finals. Like, that's like, do y'all, like, that's such a small percentage that that could happen. They both win out final eight and they wind up meeting in the finals. That's such a small percentage. And, uh, Never thought it would happen a million a million times in a row, and and they both balled. They both looked like the best players. They both really uh, did well, and we rooted for them all the way. I think in the back of my mind, Clef is somebody that I expect him to win games. You know, against Canes, I expect him to win those games. When he played Joke, 
Uh, he kind of, that game kind of wasn't close, you know, when he played Joke. It wasn't close. It was nothing, you know. But then John is like, is he going to beat Drenny? Like, come on, dude. It's fucking Drenny, right? As, 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 is John going to beat Drenny? Like, that's a crazy, that's a crazy underdog, right? And he wins. So it's like, oh, shit. Now all I got to do is be ice. And they wind up being in the finals, right? And from a group, from a friend standpoint, from a group, uh, from the people that's been in the Discord for three weeks playing the shit out the game every night till 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 5 a.m., right? It's like, oh shit, this is tough. Like, I'm this is crazy exciting. This is awesome. For all the work these kids put in, for all the work that we all put in, this is awesome. So so naturally, we're like on top of the world. Ecstatic for them, ecstatic for the group, ecstatic for our friends, ecstatic to, to realize that bro, we are on top of the Madden world. That is what it feels. And so instantly when the game started, we I mean, we all hopped into Discord. We were all together and we were having fun. I, I, I had, you know, it was no doubt that it was going to be a good time. It was no doubt that this was like, this was, I, I honestly, it was awesome for all of us. And we all were happy. We were all on top of the world. Everybody was ecstatic for both of these guys. And when we when, when the game started, we're on the Discord and we agreed that, man, Clef got to win this game because if he doesn't win, then it's going to be a little bit sad. And we all said that. We all said that, boys. We all agreed on that. In in, in the Discord, we agreed on that. Uh, so we... We were kind of like, damn, Clef kind of got to win this game or the vibe's going to be a little bit different. The vibes are going to be a little bit different. So, essentially, the game happens. We're super happy. If you remember, Clef fumbles twice and we're fucking devastated. Clef throws a pick in the end zone. We're devastated. Um, so, the whole time, we're happy. Game's over. We're happy, but it's like, damn, Clef lost. But what are... What, as a group that is on top of the world, like, what is our... Yeah, the run commit, we were sick. Uh, what is our options after that game happens? Like, what are we supposed to do? You know, for me, I have never hit anybody up after they lose, for real. I really... I've never done that, and that's that's from dealing with with Skimbo. That's from dealing with Vilma. That's from dealing with Boogs. Like, dude, you lose, you're on your own. You know where I'm at. You know where I'm at. If you want to talk about it, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? You know where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I never hit nobody up after a loss. Because for me, if I lose, I don't want to hear a little you'll be all right speech until I ask for that shit. Like, if I want my, if I want my, you'll feel better, you'll be okay speech. I'm going to go ask for it, you know? I don't want it to be just sent to me. That's just how I feel. Um, so I don't hit anybody up when they win. Uh, so what happens is, you guys got see, you guys don't know. There's the, a whole nother Discord, right? There's a whole nother Discord, and the Discord is full of these Madden players. You know what I'm saying? Every Madden player, you know, every sweat Madden player, right? Now, as we watch the Needed Bowl, do you think the other Madden players were happy to watch the Needed Bowl? Do you think they were in a good mood to watch it? Do you think that was what they wanted to watch? Do you think that's what they signed up when they started playing this tournament was to watch the Needed Bowl? Do you think they enjoyed it? I'm just a I'm just asking. Do you think do you think it was something they really wanted to uh, really wanted to watch and enjoy? I just want to know. What do you think their attitude was when there was two people from the same squad playing in the finals? Not one person won. I just want to know what do you think their attitude was when there was two people from the same squad and me and the boys were acting like assholes in the chat during the whole time. I just want to know. What do you think their attitude was? Seeing our whole squad on top of the world. And that's my point. And so as the game ended, what happened was we, we were on the Discord and where Clef went, was to that Discord with all the old mad, all the old mad people that are mad that we were on top. So what do you think they told Clef in that Discord? It's all right, bro. You'll be back. Your squad supports you. 
it's all right, Clef, man. You're going to do great. Your squad is behind you, Clef. What do you think they told him? That's what I'm asking. They told him, damn, Clef, look at your squad. They celebrating without you. Damn, Clef, they doing you dirty. Damn, Clef, I would never be in a squad like that. Damn, Clef, how you going how you gonna let them party on your behalf? They gonna leave you out to dry? They saying fuck you and partying with somebody else? Now I saw all this shit. I saw it. With my eye, we all saw it. If you guys watch, we're all watching this Discord while we were streaming and like, damn, this is crazy. And naturally, Clef already pissed that he lost, as everybody is when they lost. You know what I'm saying? So that's when while we're we're having a good time, that's when I went into this court. I said, yo, Clef, join the court, bro. Cause fuck these dudes. These not the dudes you're supposed to be on, be talking to when you lose. They're not. Period. They're not the dudes you should be talking to. Even though you lost, bro, we are here regardless. That's what I that's all I said in Discord. I said, Clef, join up. If you don't want to, fine. But for me, those is not the dudes you gotta be around for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were all reading this play by play. And it and it, it was some point in the Discord where Trey and Buzz and all them just started airing them out like, yo, you you acting like a broad, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, if I did something wrong, I honestly I'm sorry. I, I text Clef that that I'm sorry. Uh I I I don't know what I would have did differently personally. I really don't know what I would have did done differently. I felt like in my life, when somebody wins, Drenny was definitely gassing the whole damn day celebrating with you. Drenny was gassing, but he was gassing. Uh, but for me, I have always celebrated somebody's accomplishment. Um, to win and when I won it it was the the best thing that ever happened like I it might sound like a L like my life is shitty but when I won a Madden tournament in front of that many people uh it was kind of it was the best thing that happened to me so I know what it's like right so when people win to me it's like dude I got I got to celebrate this at least toast congratulate this person right now it's the it's the dude we just added to the squad a month ago what am I supposed to, am I, you know, I always, I wanted him to turn his stream on because that's the benefit of it. You're at home. You can turn your stream. I said, John, turn your stream on. I want to host you with these 2,000, 3,000 people that are watching this watch party right now. I want to put them all in your stream and I want to gift you subs. Why? I would never change that decision a day in my life, right? I never would. So for me, uh, that's what I wanted to do. I remember actually... Skimbo lost Madden 18 versus Beast Mode, right? This is a tournament Skimbo should have won easily. He he got popped by Beast Mode. I don't want to say he laid down. He got a little unlucky. Beast Mode played pretty good. Uh, but Beast Mode won. And I remember Skimbo did his, I'm disappearing for an hour. I'll come back an hour. So during that hour, during that hour, I, I remember toasting with Beast Mode after he won. Like, dude, I'm happy for you, blah, blah, blah. Everybody that's won a Madden tournament, I've tried my best to support them and celebrate with them because it is a big deal. <clears throat> so for me, uh, I don't think I would have changed anything about that night. It wasn't the... Ch I don't think it was the Choke Slam event. I don't remember. But no, honestly, I really... We cracked the champagne when the game started. We definitely wanted Clef to win. Unfortunately, he didn't win. You know, and I don't, like I said, I don't know what I I would have done different. I don't know what I, I should have done different or, honestly, I really don't. One, I already drank a bottle and a half of liquor. So, I'm already on. I'm already having a good time. So... Aftermath, this is all right. So after Clef puts a tweet out, I'm not in social media already is like uh already finicky. If Clef wins, if Clef wins, we're all here the same way we are now. One million percent. Nothing would have changed. 
it would have been a completely different vibe. There would have been no negative to it. But you know what? He didn't win. He lost. You know what I'm saying? And John won. So what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to pout pout? You know what I'm saying? Who who's supposed to pout? It's a no pouting situation. Period. It's a no pouting situation for me. You know what I'm saying? If you want to pout, that's fine. Some people like to pout after they lose. Boogs are big. Everybody's pretty much a powder when they lose. It's just levels to the shit. For real, for real. <clears throat> John Powder when he won. You know. Yeah, I don't know how it wasn't a win-win, Lucky. I don't know how. You know, I just... I... I hearken back to this story. I hearken back. No one uses that word. I need a water. I'm sorry, boys. I hearken back. I hearken back. I hearken back to this this story. I got to replace new wheels all the time. I hearken back to this story, right? I've always said, um, you, you can tell somebody's character when they lose for real, for real. Now, and I hearken back to this story about me and Skimbo and the Madden, Madden 17 final four that I won. I remember Skimbo losing and being the saddest I've ever seen a human being. You ever see like a kid when they got their kid their their toy taken from them and they don't know where the toy is for real? That's how Skimbo law looked when I beat him in Madden 17, right? Just pouty as ever, sitting here with his book bag just like, for real, like, super pouty. Like, I've never seen somebody that sad. And then I play Problem, and I beat Problem. And I, honestly, Skimbo was happier than I was that I won that belt. I, I honestly have never seen somebody emotionally do a 180 like that to go from the saddest person in the room to the happiest person in the room. And uh, and, and, and I always said, man, if you can... I got to harken back. Yeah, if you can be that happy for somebody else, man, you're super content. And you're you're going to be successful. I feel. I just. It, it's always harder to be happy for someone else, but it shows what your heart really is. You know, for real. Like, yeah, that shit was different. I'll never forget that shit. I would like, like, I'll never forget that shit, dude. For real. Uh, he was super happy for that. So that's when I was like, yeah, this this is a good guy. But everybody's different, you know. And, and you know, like I said, if I felt if I did something wrong that night. Um, I'm sorry to Clef. Like I said, I called him once. I texted him. I haven't heard from him. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean, I didn't never meant to ever hurt this kid ever. I always believe in Clef. I think he's the best man player. I think he'll be the best man streamer. If he puts his all into it, he will be the best. I have always believed that. And I have always told him that after every single time he's lost in a tournament or every single time he feels like he's let us down. And I told him, I, you, you, I have never been let down. Because you're a superstar. I have told him this since Madden 19. Non-stop. Told him this, you know? Non-stop. So, like I said, I'm sorry. I don't think I would have changed anything differently. I don't think I would have. So, Drenny did try to add Clef. Don't let Drenny... But this is how I feel about Drenny. Drenny don't know what... He's so stupid and airheadish. He don't know what the hell he's doing. Seriously, he really don't. Like, he don't... Yo, when he do that touchdown on me when he was up 30 points with two minutes left, that's when I realized he don't have no common morality or nothing. He don't know shit. For real. He don't... Like, he don't know any... Like, he just here having fun. Like, yo. For real. As soon as I saw him throw that throw that touchdown up 30, I said, all right. I was like, all right, he don't know. He don't know right from wrong for sure. Yeah, he he like an eight-year-old kid, bro. He don't know. He don't know no better for real. 
But like I said, I, I always believed in Clef. I always will, whether I talk to him ever again or not. I don't know. I will always think he's the best. Uh, I have no hard feelings. In fact, I, regardless, I, I don't, I wouldn't have did anything differently, but I, I still think I did something wrong, but I, I wouldn't have changed anything that I did. Um, I'll always celebrate all, I will always celebrate somebody's accomplishments. Um, and it was John's night. It was at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it was John's night. God bless him. And like I said, if, if you know what I'm saying, I don't know. I felt like I've, I've always helped these kids a lot. You know, I say kids, but you know, they're my peers. You know, I felt like I've always did my best to help them and, and guide them as best as possible for the most point. Uh, all right, so then, then what happened was later in the night when half everybody's asleep, I actually fell asleep too, like this on the chair, like this. I did. First time it ever happened to me, I fell asleep on a chair. This was in John's stream. This wasn't in my. I, we'll get to it. So I passed out on the chair after the champagne and shit. So I wake up. And then I we're still live. I said, oh, let's go. It's, it was just like me, Vilma, Joff, and John at the time. John's Because John had to get his head shaved. And he was getting his head shaved for four hours. If any, like, it was the worst head shaving ever. I was like, dude, I could cut, I could shave my head with, like, like with, you know, a rock faster than you're shaving your head. Oh, my God. That's why I fell asleep, honestly. So I wake up. I turn the thing back on. Then I see, I see my peers in, in the chat. The same group of people that was egging Clef on and, and antagonizing him to flip on us. The same group of people that was in that Discord just gassing Clef up that we were bad for him. That same group of people were in John's chat. And I snapped because I listen, I'm already I'm first of all I'm on. I drank the whole bottle of champagne and more. So So I see all these people in the chat. They just gassed him up so much. And for me, I saw them, so I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to air these dudes out, right? whoever it is. So I aired them out. I call them out, like, bro, like, just, you was foul. That's it. You was out of line. And, and when I air somebody out, y'all been here before. When, I, when it gets to that point of airing somebody out, they get aired out. When it gets to that point of airing somebody, y'all know that. Y'all been there. It's, it's people that have not survived the air out. They ain't survived the stream. For real. And uh, so anyway, then these people, their their response to that, to me airing them out, was to bring up my racist tweets from 2011. That was their response. So they brought that up. That is what they brought. Now, I'll, I'll be honest. If you guys don't know that I had racist uh, tweets, they are here. You can Google them. Um. By all means, I've never backed away from it. I've always talked to people all the time. Um, it was a way that I grotesquely joked with my friends that was completely inappropriate at the time and e even more inappropriate now. That it's not even, it's not how I act now. It's not how I talk. It's not how I behave. But then, back then, uh, it was something that I joked about all the time with my, not all the time, but enough to where, you know what I'm saying? Where it was just something that, just how we joked and it was completely wrong and completely inappropriate the, from now to then always um and it's not who i am now it's not something that i do now and uh for me what i was gonna say uh for me that is when when they and and you know i always i always understand that new people will bring that up and people that haven't met me or people that are new here and they realize that they'll say, damn, that, and that hurt. You know what I'm saying? That hurt. You know, I didn't know that. All that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I understand that. But when it's people that are my peers and know me that bring it up, that's when it's like, what is the point of me putting my all into this community? If the community that knows who I am, that smiles in my face when they meet me, that is happy to do anything that I, that I, any opportunity I have for them, they will take that opportunity and smile in my face, right? 
Those are the ones that bring it up when they want to bring me down. Those are the ones that throw it in my face when it's when I'm too high. That's when it's like, that's the shit that's disappointing to me. I understand people that haven't met me or you heard this for the first time and you're turned off and you don't want to support me or you don't want to uh, be in my corner. That's understandable. It's something I deal with forever. And it's something I have accepted. And I'm, I'm sorry, you don't, but I, I can't do anything about it. It's just, it's part of my life. It's part of me, you know, so... And I understand that. But for people to smile in my face and when it's good for them, be my friend. But then as soon as I'm on top and I'm popping, to bring that out, because you know it's the ammunition you have, it's the only ammunition you have, to bring that out is like, it's depressing. It's like, why do I spend this much energy on this community for that shit to do it to me? Why do I deserve that? What did I do to deserve that? What did I do? For real. And that's when it's like, damn, what is the point of me putting all this effort and all this energy and all this money and all this, got everything I put into the Madden, the competitive side of that, the competitive side. It's this, this week has made me say fuck competitive side because they're just a bunch of fucking jealous bitches. Honestly, for real, just a bunch of cry baby bitches for real. And it's, and and honestly, if I knew it would just put like a, if it would put this much of a, of a stress on me and my friends, I, I honestly wouldn't give a fuck about competitive for real to be, I don't know for real. It's, it's the competitive side made me, it made me feel like, you know what? This is like crab central, man. It is crab central. I'm definitely not talking about journey at all. Journey, Journey's the man for real. He's not like I said. Journey is an eight-year-old. We don't know yet. No, for real. Uh, but anyway, so as these people were in my chat, my peers were calling me. I was racist, I, and they said, and then they, they, and then they called me out like I, like I hide from it. And that's when I said, no, I, I said it, and I said it with, I said it with so much passion. And then of course they turn that into, you know, that's how I feel today. That's how they spun that people that, you know, obviously people that I've met, people that have shook my hand and smiled in my face, spun it to the point where that's how I feel today. You know, um, so for me, and that is why, and so it's made me once again, a racial person or a racist person in the community. So everybody else, uh, the other people that stepped away from needed are stepping away because they don't want to be associated with a racist person again. So, and they think that being associated with me hurts their, hurts their potential growth, you know, where, you know, I think, I think being, with me and the group and the needed group that helps streams and promotes streams and all that is more beneficial than anything. But, you know, I, you know, and it's just, and listen, for me, uh, I have always, they're always my friends and I always respect all their decisions. And I've always, when I first talked to them, I've always said, you know, whatever you want and what you think is best for you, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? It's about you. It's about what you think is best and, and your position that you want to take in your future. And I'm just here to support you because you're my friend and, you know, I want to help you. That was pretty much uh, my whole thought process in this whole thing. So for me, uh, I'm not, I'm really not upset about any of this i i understand it uh I, i'm just more upset that you know my peers could just want to <laughs> want to see me hurt so bad i feel like i don't deserve that from anybody i feel like i've i, I feel like i i've done my best to be cordial and friendly with every single person of the competitive man competitive man community i feel like i have relationships with everybody you know, and positive ones with absolutely everybody, uh, you know, from, and from the small, I do my best 
to f- to support the JMHs, the eight year olds, uh, you know, to to joke, to drag, to EMB, to to Kiv, to everybody. I feel like I have a good relationship with everybody. You know, my man Panda with twenty five gifted. Uh, Uh, so, but honestly, like I said, no, my point is I've always tried to stay connected to the competitive community, really. I've always, and I always feel like it's important for me to stay connected to the Madden grinders, the competitive guys. Um, you know, but I understand why my friends don't want to be, oh, my man Panda going crazy. I understand why some of my friends don't want to be associated with me no more. I really, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's part of life. And I told you, I remember, uh, it's always been a part of my life. It's always been, you know, something I've dealt with. And I never want my friends to feel like they're dealing. Cause it sucks, man. This cancel culture, it sucks. It sucks. It's terrible. It's deserved. I mean, I deserve it. I'll never back away from that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't suck. You know, and I never wanted to affect my friends. You know, I never wanted to affect anybody that I deal with because for real, for real, this shit is, this shit is tough. It sucks. It does. Uh, no, nah, these dudes are my friends and they, they always will be like, regardless, uh, like I said, if I don't talk to Cliff anymore, I I always believe in him. I always think he'll be the best. Um, but the way I felt this weekend was kind of how I felt when they didn't put me in the Madden the Madden game. It's kind of how I felt, like just bummed out. Like this is this is a tough road, you know. It's like this is uh, it took me back to that crossroads of do I quit or do I just go harder? That's pretty much where I was at this weekend. Do I do I quit or do I go harder? That's pretty much how I felt this weekend. And not so much quit, obviously not quit streaming and Madden and shit like that, but I always had a dream of having a team and having a group and having, like, the power to help people stream, support people's streams and all that stuff. I've always felt like the way... Uh, Panda, you're a lord, you're a legend. So I'm at that crossroads. Do we listen? So, and for me, the only way to, the only way to get over it is the full send. It's the only way. Otherwise, otherwise I'd be depressed. It's either full send or be depressed. So we're going to full send. We got the website working. That's our first step to make sure we get money into this team. I'm going to find the people that want to be here. I'm going to find the people that want to grind. I'm going to find the people that want to be a part of this. I'm going to find the people that, you know, understand what I, me and my team bring to the table. I'm going to find those people. You know, I still have my boys that are still with me, man. Uh, they're, we're going to, we're going to dominate for real. Uh, we have expanded out of Madden. Uh, obviously we're MLB we dominate that. 2k i want 2k bad i want some 2k streamers um but like i said the boys that are with me uh for real those are my guys um you know for real and i I, and my goal is to and I, i will tell you man i between clef and all the everybody that left for me i listen my door is always open my door is here uh, if you want to come back, if you test the other side of the green grass, man, you guys are my friends. I, I listen. I will continue to support them full, full heartedly. You know, those guys are. I believe in them. I believe in them, and for me, uh, FIFA streamers really. So for me, like I said, my door's still open, and um, it's always an option for them to come back at some point. You know, because. Like I said, uh, it wouldn't, my brand wouldn't be where it is without Clef, without Trey, and without some other people, you know, so 
for me, those guys are always a part of it. I'll always support them. Like I said, I listen the way the way. Honestly, I don't. I don't want to do another bot wars. I don't want to, dude. I don't. I don't want to. I really don't. I really don't. My man, see balling with the ten gifted. I really don't. It ended on a bang, dude. Part of me wants to say, part of me wants to, bro. Part of me wants to just say, just grind myself and say, fuck doing shit for other people. Like for real, it really does. It really does. But we will definitely do another Bot Wars. We are still having Bot Wars live. Bot Wars live will go down in the spring. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Mike, I tried, man. It's just... I, w I was depressed. I was sad. I, I I kept looking in the mirror like, how did this go from... How did this go from the needed bowl to fucking everybody leaving? For real, for real. My man MP with 25. Give. I'm sorry if I miss any subs. I really was like, dude, what? Like, how did this happen? You know? How did this shit happen? But I mean, I'm I'm a very faithful person, and I believe that a lot of the stuff, <clears throat> all that happens for a reason. It just honestly, I I have been feeling bad. I honestly have been feeling, I for the last year or so, I have been feeling like I haven't done enough for my friends. I really felt that way for real. Like, whether it be Clef or Trey or Skimbo or Boys, I really have always felt like I haven't done enough for these. You know what I'm saying? I haven't done enough for them. I wish I could do more. My man Mike Mack with 10. My man MP25, primetime. See balling with 10. I have really always felt like I haven't done enough. For real, I really do. Um... <clears throat> and this has uh this has motivated me to say you know I need to do more I need to elevate I need to take the next step for real for real that's that's where my mind is now you know and that's uh essentially where I'm at with it honestly You know, and I feel like honestly, and I feel like I feel bad because I feel like everybody else that's associated with me is put into a bad decision. Like they have to make a decision, you know, and I feel bad about that. You know, it's like, like, <laughs> what am I supposed to say, dude? Like. Yeah, I want you to stay with me. I want to grow this. I, I, I want to keep pushing and I want to grow this to something special that I know it can be. You know, I know I believe in myself more than anything. So for me, it's like I don't want them to feel like they got to stay or they got, you know, it's like. You know. Air facts, man, it's just. Panda, you're a legend. Demon man, I, I it's crazy how excited I was and how happy I was during that game and that tournament. 
I, how happy and excited I was for the future. I was like, bro, this is huge. It's kind of, I remember Madden 18 in the classic. Madden 18 in the classic was tough. I started a business. I Once again, nerd level zero. Madden, the summer of Madden 17, I was going to have taxes. I started a business. I really, uh, I started a business. I put a lot of pressure on myself. I said, this business is going to fail if I don't make a live event. I put all that pressure on my mind. It wasn't true. It's not true at all. Uh, so for me, my goal was, uh, you know, I, I put this pressure on me. I want to, I want to make another live event. It's going to help my, my business succeed. And Madden 18 classic was live event. I lost live event in New York. I lost live event in Philly. I lost live event in Vegas. I lost last chance online. You had to play 15 single elimination games and I won the last game and the joy I had thinking that the joy I had thinking that it was going to help my business so much that I won that event or I made that event. So for me, that same joy I had making the Madden 18 classic was the joy I had watching my friends compete in the tournament. And, and it was almost to a fault where I felt bad that they were making it so much about me and the group rather than the kids that were winning. So I went from, I went from, uh, I went from being on top of the world to feeling super sick, you know, and I felt super sick this whole weekend. I, I, I really, I really, um, I'm at the point where I don't know what I did for clout. I don't know. You know, I don't think, I don't think that's one of my angles for the most part. You know. But like I said, man, these are my boys. I support them regardless if I ever talk to them again. You know, I support them and I will. And I have nothing bad to say about anybody that made their decision to leave. In fact, like my doors, they all know my phone number. My doors are always open for all of them, for real. <clears throat> No, we're gonna go up. It's okay, man. I don't know what I deserve for people to uh, want me to fail. Really, I don't know. Bro, I have always left my stream on probably once a month. And that's one of the reasons I really don't want to, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's one of the reasons I don't be wanting to host people for real. I don't want to host because I always wind up leaving my stream on. Sorry, that's trust me, bro. It happens to me all the time, for real, for real. 
That's why I'd be like, host this guy. But like, uh, no, I don't really want to. For real, for real. Bro, Earl just does shit for attention. Yeah, it, bro. Kiv, I'd never stop. Kiv, you're not subbed? I got took off fucking auto pay? Actually fucking crazy, Shay. That's crazy. I thought we were like friends for life. Somebody dunk on Kiv, bro. Journey, don't start, Journey. Don't start. Damn, just like that dunk. Oh, no, J. Bray dunked on Allerton. <laughs> New card. New card, I switched it up. No, but for real, like I said, this is a crossroads. Damn, Kane. And Kiv is a whole turquoise badge. No, for real, uh, this is the crossroads where we just got a full send. That's it. We got a full send, and we're going to take the next step. I didn't let anybody run Journey away, uh, Legend. I ain't, bro, that Journey ran himself away. For real, for real. We are locking in. We are, listen, we are full sending. Uh, that we are full sending. I'll tell you that right now. There is no pouting. There is no. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if the boys ever get, if the boys ever get, you know, they want to fuck with it again. I'm here, bro. For real. I don't have no bad feelings. I don't have no animosity, man. I respect everybody's decision for their own part. You know what I'm saying? And they can do what's best for them. You know, everybody's a grown up. They. Listen, they know what's best for them, and, and I trust that they know. You know, I'm not going anywhere. Madden, I'm always going to be here in Madden. Needy Game is always going to be a staple. So, you know what I'm saying? If the boys that help make it want to come back one day, 100% open, open door, you know? I feel confident in my ability to help people be a good streamer. I feel confident in my ability to guide people in streaming. I feel confident in my ability to promote people's streams and make them, you know... Uh, a competent streamer for I've always felt that way. I believe in that and I will always believe in that. And that's one of my biggest assets I will have for the rest of my life. Honestly. Listen, journey and I listen, we're always like tight. You know what I'm saying? We was always tight. And then, you know, journey got journey got offended by people in squad. <laughs> Ain't nothing. You know, but Journey's kind of soft. <clears throat> but I listen, because I've been around Journey so much that I understand. Like, he's kind of clueless to human. Journey is clueless to human. Like, he, Journey's kind of an alien. He doesn't know what it's like to be human. Like, have that emotional thing and stuff. Like, so he's like, when he gets put into human situations, he doesn't always know how to behave. Like, there was this time he was beating me by 30 points with two minutes left, and he threw a touchdown. A regular human would say, you know, I've won this game already. Let me just run the clock out. But this alien human said, you know what? I'm going up top. That's when I realized Journey is kind of an alien. He don't really understand. He's oblivious to human interaction and human feelings, for real. Yeah. He's kind of kawaii. That's a good point. Yeah, he'd be a whole asshole, but he don't really know that he's being an asshole. You know what I'm saying?
I'm Kawhi Leonard. No Monet. <laughs> Maze, why would you hug Journey? How do you get in a position where it's time to hug Journey? Like, what? <laughs> My man posts with the five gifted. Drenny do everything awkward. Drenny got into a club with a fake ID, then went and snitched on himself to the bouncer. That literally happened. I'm inside. And then he went and tapped on the bouncer, showed up, you know, I'm really not supposed to be here. And he got kicked out. I swear to God. That's when, okay, they were there. It really, I swear to God. Then he called me like, yo, you want my bracelet? I'm like, what? I was like, he's like, hey, you want my bracelet? I said, yeah, I'll take it. I'm cool with it. I, it, it one million percent was a true story. I said, Journey, you ain't going? He said, no, I went in. Then I left. I said, why you leave? I, I told him I was I was 19. See, but Journey is right. It was definitely no holes in there, though. He might have been right. He might have been 10 steps ahead of us like he is on Madden. He might have been 10 steps ahead of us. I went in there and seen Oreo and Civil and Throne. I said, all right, I'm out of here. I said, Journey might have been right. <laughs> Journey might have been goaded. It was not still early. If Let me tell you something. If the girls aren't there early, they're not going to be there late. I'll tell you that. You know what they're doing late? You know what they're doing at late night? They're not going to the next club. <laughs> Journey would be a good wingman. The, the robot. Was that when was that when Jay Bird took the Uber lot to Jose's house? I mean, yo, Dre's. Is that when is that when he took the Uber ride? Nah, same the same. God bless, bro. God bless, dude. Listen, you got to have negative stories because then the negative stories will make the positive ones that much more powerful. If your life isn't full with negative stories, then what's the point of having positive ones is how I feel, you know? Like I, we all got some negative ass stories. And if your biggest negative story is I rode an Uber to see Jose in Cali, it's a pretty cool story. Honestly. I mean, no, I mean. Shakobi was goaded. Yo, Shakobi was goaded that trip. I don't want to hear nobody say shit. When Shakobi showed up to a man event with a whole lay on, I said, okay. I said, okay, bro. He's he's goaded. There he is. See, look at him. He elevated. Shakobi went from... Yo, honestly, I don't even joke about Shakobi no more. He got to the point where he can't be joked about. Like, he switched spot. Jay Bird took Shakobi's spot in the community that weekend. I'll be honest. The heel, the heel of the Madden community was no longer Shakobi. He became on the cool side. Like, there's like a mountain you climb in the Madden community. Like, you climb this mountain. Like, you always start off as a shitter, right? You start off as a shitter. Like, Journey was the nerd-ass little kid. 
I don't know if he's quite over the mountain. Like Madden wise, he's on the other f- ground of the mountain, right? But cool wise, you start off at the at the bottom. Me myself, I started off on the cool side. I was never at the bottom of the never, never. But I was older, so it didn't count. You know what I'm saying? So by the time I got in the Madden community, I was always 30 years old. So I, I I listen. I had already went over that hill 15 years ago. Foxwoods, hey, listen. No, Jay Bird, you you climb, but then you slide your ass back down every once in a while. Like you were ready to go over the top of the, and then you didn't have an Xbox to play in Bot Wars, so you slid all the way to fuck back down. That's when you messed up. You know what I'm saying? When I gave ample month month of time to prepare for a fucking Bot Wars tournament that was going to be the biggest one ever, you couldn't get an Xbox. That is when you fell all the way back down. You are now at the pit of despair. That's where you're at now. You're down in the pit of despair. An hour before tournament. Yo, I can't find an Xbox. You know? But anyway... Yo, he was, that dude was far as shit. Dude, Jaber came home, the sun was up. <laughs> it was like, yo. <laughs> yo. Jaber texts everybody, he said, where y'all at? Oh, we at Denny's eating breakfast. <laughs> oh, man. But, like I said, at the end of the day, I support all my friends' decisions. I have nothing bad to say about none of them. They will continue to be successful. And my door and my phone number is always open if you need anything, for real. I mean, I'm not a petty person. I'm not upset at anybody, you know. I said, I'm sorry if I did anything wrong. I never meant to do anything wrong. Uh, But the people that are here, the people that are locked in, we are going to full send. We are going to take everything to the next level. I'm going to support everybody 10 times as much as I've supported them before. And we're just going to get get things popping, for real. Like, I have to do more. That's how I feel right now. It's a wake-up. It's a wake-up call that I have to do more. I have to put more effort into a group. I have to be better. That's it, you know? That's how I feel. All gas, you know, and and the people that don't want to be here, God bless them because they're going to look back and say, damn, I should have been there for real. And like I said, when they want to come back, God bless dudes, dudes helped make the squad. So they'll always have the door will always be open for real, for real. But this was the Nita podcast. Glad I could talk about that. So anything else you guys want to talk about, uh, leave it in the comments. All that good stuff. You know the vibes. This is only the beginning. This is that speed bump that the airplane takes before it hits the runway, honestly. That's what it is. I don't have any unbans. I don't want to do any unbans. We can do them after that. Yeah, I, I you know, t I, I don't... What, what my friends have done for me and... The needed brand will never be forgotten and always be it will always be an opportunity for them to always come rock with us for real so this is the rebirth and honestly my man joff is he's full sending bro he don't want to be hitting me up every day well he said what about the rebirth we ready for the rebirth i told him rebirth is going to be crazy so I'm telling y'all right now once vols yeah once vote but y'all don't understand vols gonna be hella different and we've said this for years once he actually, you know, slides in, once he slides in some, you know what I'm saying, he going to be a different whole, he might not even want to play Madden no more. Ban request will be in your spam. I'm not doing any, I'm not doing any damn CFMs. I'm done with CFMs. I'm done with them. Bar boys, like I said, any other thing you want to talk about, like I said, I I will be living with my tweets, my racial tweets for my entire life. I never ran from them. I never, ever, 
didn't want to talk about them. I never dodged questions talking about them. I never opened up to anybody that seriously asked me questions about it. You know, I, and that's how I've always been, and that's how you got to take it head on. And it's not how I act now. I'm sorry that it ever was something that I used. And no matter what form it was, it's never inexcusable, and there's never no excuses for it. But uh, I'm definitely an older, smarter, better person now than I was 10 years ago. And I will forever be apologizing for those. And uh, they will always loom over me. I just never want them to loom over my friends. So I understand why some of them backed away from the brand. And that's fine. But uh, like I said, <clears throat> I appreciate all you guys that continue to support me. If you choose not to, then, I mean, I respect that as well. I respect everybody's decision. At the end of the day, everybody has their own their own goals, their own plans, and their own admiration. So... For me, whatever they choose to do, I have to continue to support, and I will. So let's get it, boys. And like I said, this is just the ground floor of the blow-up.